Welcome back to Stellaris and a role play on Grand Admiral with Crisis 25. We're going to play something rather special here. Common Ground hasn't seen a lot of views. And we're going to play it um, as a role play. We're playing the Earth Culture Cooperative. As you can see, we are democratic, have a rational consensus because we have a technocracy and a meritocracy which helps mostly with science and specialist output. Also helping is egalitarian and fanatic materialist, just going into the same thing, also allowing for more robots. Then we are nomadic, as the human background is an extremely adaptive, a slight variation. On the other hand, we, we want our own will. We are unruly and we're a little bit wasteful. That is connected, right? If you if you don't uh, want to make a compromise, you're often maybe a little bit wasteful. You're, you're going for the absolute best, something like that. And additionally to that, um, we're playing kind of the origin of the culture novels, like the pre-culture. The pre-culture of the books by Banks, Iron and Banks, is that the culture before it exists, the culture now is a civilization of mostly robotic minds, but the humans are tagged along. And they are not completely useless, but you can say it's a rogue servitor society in a way. And this is the pre-culture when they meet other peoples before they become the culture out of that federation. So it's kind of a law before the culture happens, and we're going to play into that a little bit. What does common ground mean? Common ground means you start as the leader of a galactic union. Now, we don't want to only roleplay this. We also have some pretty clear outlook. I mean, we're technocrats. And we want to transform this galactic union into a research union. So what we're going to go for as a strategy is quickly putting this to like a lot of investment with our envoys. So we get to a lot of cohesion very quickly. And that cohesion allows us to change the type of our federation because that's also, what happened in the novels when when you when you come to 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 speak there of the origins of the culture and it's also a fascinating process. I think Common Ground transformed to a research federation is something maybe a little bit unique at least <laughs> because everyone says Common Ground is so so weak and we're gonna we're gonna just test it. So, um, what we have here is all the cool empires that our community has made for us. Thoughtful gaming community. I've asked them for a few empires and these and also these here. We'll join the party. I'm going to play on a huge map. so. All the civilizations have room there. Let's just be extra safe and add a couple of couple more, just in case common ground counts or counts not. We're going to go full fallen empires, full marauder empires, normal tech cost, primitive civilizations, normal crisis strength twenty five, a random crisis type because I like surprises, and grand admiral with scaling off means that. The game starts on Grand Admiral, so the AIs have all the advantages from the start. We have the hyperlane density up a little bit, because the weakness of common ground is that you might start boxed in. But that is avoided if you have a little bit more hyperlane density. So you might be boxed in by your own Federation members, and if you put up a little bit more hyperlane density here, from 1 to 1.5 or 2, then usually you can avoid that. You, you, you then have a way to ensure that every one of your Federation partners gets at least some room to expand. 
and that no one gets really boxed in or has to jump over to another system to have a like a an empire in parts or something like that that is very influence intensive other than that we're just going for the standard thing logistic growth ceiling 1.5 growth required scaling 0 0.25 that's all default the style of the game will be um a little bit of cuts when we have events things like that and um, when we have just standard building I might speed that up and uh, put something else nice on so you can still see what I do all the time but it won't take that long like the routine things or the the general execution of things will not need that, that long and so save you time and still be interesting if you want to see all the moves that I make to execute the strategy from the strategy point of view. The main focus is the roleplay, the events and uh, how it all plays into each other. Welcome to the Earth Culture Cooperative. Immanuel Kahn is our leader with an architectural sense and an explorer. That will help us at the start. Decades ago, when our first crude sublight probes visited the star systems neighboring our own, we discovered the presence of two distinct alien civilizations. Despite the radical differences in our physiology, it quickly became apparent that we had more things in common than not. Like us, they were also on the cusp of unlocking practical interstellar travel. A bond was formed between our three civilizations, which eventually led to the birth of a federation. We would combine our efforts, and when we were ready to spread out into the cosmos, whatever was out there would be faced by us standing together. Fascinating. And we are the president of the Cosmic Compact. Very nice. Let's do the first things that we must do to make this a moment of glory and success. We'll send the construction ship to Mars. <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> then we need to make decisions as to what to research. Support the researchers. Support the energy grid. We're going to support the researchers. Because, let me elaborate. We don't need a fusion reactor as of now, because we don't need no battleships for now. And we don't really have enough um, energy technician jobs to make an energy grid worthwhile. So... I'm going to go for quantum theory. It also needs no investment, which is just great. Then we're going to go for Gumi, and we'll see. We have similar choices here. Um, society research is a good choice. Ground defense planning is an awful choice. We don't need defense at the moment, so no to that. Hydroponics farming unlocks the hydroponics farms, which are not bad, but we have normal... We have normal agricultural districts, so we don't need them. So it's easy to go for biodiversity studies. For engineering, we have someone special. And uh, carrier operations, we don't need something yet. Standardized covert patterns is kind of tempting, but only if we would go for a quick covert rush or something, which we are not. And so we're going for nanomechanics. Research is what our civilization is based on. And we're taking this very seriously. We're taking it to the stars, my friends. Let's see. We have Tulakin the White on the science ship, awaiting his orders. Dark Savant, our scientist, has a clear path ahead of him. First, Sirius. Sirius has a lot of things that make going there and looking for it viable and excellent. First, of course, a planet, an alpine world, that will make uh, 
our new settlements pretty quick. We are very adaptable, but we also have our other members and I guess I bet they will like the Alpine world and we're gonna get a migration treaty with them to bring their people to us so they in the name of us can found a colony on Sirius 3. That's our strategic plan. Now let's send him over there. We also want to get um, some more additional alloys to be able to build more science ships to quickly explore the galaxy because time is very much of the essence we have to do the little trick that you might know i call this the empty corvette design which is where you take almost everything out even the FTL drive, so um, that's the very bland Corvette that you get then. And this is exactly the Corvette that we will use to gain a little bit more at the start. We're going to scrap their parts and invest into more science ships instead. That's the first thing we'll do and then we'll build science ships then we need to do something with our envoys and we're already losing federation cohesion we need federation cohesion to be able to form the federation after our needs and also to level up but first we want to form it after our needs we'll send everyone in our allies already like us but we need to get the cohesion up so we have some wriggle room where our allies will support a change of the union speaking of the allies we will have a look at them first we see the united agarian alliance these proud dinosaur birds and erudite explorers they are xenophile and fanatic materialists they have an efficient bureaucracy and they are uh, really fond of the past memorialists as you can see they are just uh, rapid readers very few of them die and they are really loving creatures as you might already see from their looks they also have an alpine preference something we don't but something that will help us with a migration treaty to uh, get access to a certain planet that you already have seen. We also want research agreements with them and an em embassy. So that was the United Agarian Alliance and they will probably expand into this region of space. Hopefully they can get to some point from here. Let's talk to the others. The Varel Whiff conglomerate of, is that fungi? Yeah, are a mega corporation of peaceful traders. They're egalitarian, xenophile and materialist. Their civics uh, show that they are public relations specialists with more invoice, which will help us diplomatically and the brand loyalty for more monthly unity and encryption. It will certainly be a, a joy to rule the federations and the skies together with them. They are reformers and warlike. Their stance is mercantile for now and we also want to have a research agreement, a migration treaty and an embassy with them. Everything at once. Just as we like it. Let's have a look at Earth. Earth has some pretty uh, normal features, I should say. There are sprawling slums. We want to remove them as quickly as we can to get room for more people and to free the people that live in the sprawling slums of their fate. We'll get one human pop for that if we uh, restore some order there and make their living conditions better. 
removing the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and removing the Industrial Wasteland can wait a bit, but not too much either. Thankfully, our good Jane Feather will support our research missions intellectually. We will be constructing more uh, science ships very soon. For the for the C, the C E I, the Culture Exploration Initiative. Let's go for that very quickly, and we even have a reduction because we're an explorer. Something that will be very good for the start, with an architectural sense. Something that will help boost getting some districts on Earth. We should also have a look. We have an orbital research mandate. We should build research stations in orbit around suitable planets. And four of them. So a lot of exploration is uh, needed. And we're looking forward to explore space more and more and more. You honor us. May our friendship last forever, says the Varalviv conglomerate. We're establishing an embassy. And opening migration between us will make for a better future for humans and Igarian alike. Indeed it will, my friends. Indeed it will. May our friendship last forever. And ever, ever. What more can you dream of? Maybe this very well. We will share our knowledge with the Earth Culture Cooperative in exchange for our own, says the United Igarian Alliance. Something very important. We will exchange people and knowledge and everyone will profit from it. They are already exploring the Xigar system. And we expect the guys from Alpha Centauri, the Igarians, to go for Delco. Or maybe Akama already. We are, of course, choosing Sirius. And we'll move to Procyon. Here we go. We don't need a leader for that. We will get a leader in there once we have arrived there. For all the new scientists, we could choose for our ship the meticulous Mr. Cortez would be our best choice to survey the Procyon system. Oh, it would be so good for us and for the research. Our sun, Sol, is a G-type main sequence star often called a yellow dwarf. Such a star has about 0.9 to 1.1 solar masses and an effective temperature between around 5,300 and 6000 K. A G-type main sequence star is converting the element hydrogen to helium in its core by means of nuclear fusion, the Sun. The star to which the Earth is gravitationally bound in the solar system is the perfect example of a G-type main sequence star G2 V-type. Each second the Sun fuses approximately 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium in a process known as the proton-proton chain, converting about 4 million tons of matter to energy. Besides the Sun, other well-known examples of G-type main sequence stars include Alpha Centauri A, Tau Ceti, and 51 Pegasi. Our adaptable uh, friend, Joel Gorn, would be another one to assist us in our research here. We would send her quickly into 
the unknown. Glory awaited. Torrent of lights and river of the air, along whose bed the glimmering stars are seen, like gold and silver sands in some ravine, where mountain streams have left their channels bare. And then we found something very significant, something very different, something utterly alien the Procyon system, a strange empire, strange remnants of something called the Yucht Empire. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Procyon 3a. Our scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly six million years ago, based on the age of the artifacts. The aliens called themselves the Yucht and appear to have been very large and flat arthropoid analogues. It seems a single individual could reach a length of nearly a hundred meters as an adult, and it was apparently exceedingly rare for more than two or three Yucht to travel aboard the same starship. What a curious culture. What giant aliens. What more can we find out about these fascinating beings? And what made them die out? And suddenly, also anomalies started. Sensor echoes have indicated the presence of some kind of unidentified object deep within the atmosphere of the gas giant Barnard's Star 5. Go for it, Joel. We must get to the bottom of this very, very quickly. It might have to do something with a yacht. Something else and really strange in the mysterious Procyon system. Sergio Cortes reports, the surface of the asteroid D9 U46 is littered with metallic debris. Most of it appears to originate from starships of many different designs. The last battle of the Yucht we must find out. Remnants, intelligent life, taunted with pointed absence. I mean, except our allies, of course. Reads a popular newsnet post on Earth. The people of the Earth Culture Cooperative are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals. I mean, not speaking of our allies, of course, from other stars, continue to elude us. We might, might just have found the two compatible people, the two intelligent alien people, peoples, and that could be it. But the report on the traces of alien life that were recently found seemingly add an ironic twist to the situation. There might be something more, even if it's only one-eyed bunnies or something else. The Yucht, giant arthropods and akin to millipedes and centipedes, were an enigma for our scientists. Just imagine the biggest prehistoric centipede that was around 2.5 meters or a good 8 feet long. Then multiply that by a hundred. A monster covering a whole football field, yet intelligent, probably feeling, powerful and now extinct. What could have caused these monsters to die out? Furthermore, we would hire the beautiful um, Alibia. Alibia the perfect. Yeah, that I mean, with a genius, she was just called the perfect, and uh, now. She wouldn't, because of her age, go to the spaceship. So we would have to find someone from the labs. And Johnny Really Rotten was more than able to do this. And would go into the unknown deliberately. Well, the good Olivia the Perfect went and uh, mastered our science department and physics. 
very very nice developments here very very nice she belonged to the bureau rather than into space directly and now first contact with other beings besides our own <gasps> news of alien ships humming through the ether has reached earth in many ways ending the first chapter in the book of the Earth Culture Cooperative's bid for a stellar empire and also the Cosmic Compact's first years. Intriguing, we have made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Evripa system. For now we have codenamed them Gamma Aliens until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language we must decipher it in order to establish communication. Have a look. Send Tyran. He must find out more. What an exciting moment. So we still look back to the origins of the Cosmic Compact Federations and say, how did we do it? Come together. <sighs> our good leader Immanuel Kant told the Alpine-based aliens, now our friends, they were cool, he said. You're cool of all things. What they understood from their frozen background of alpine people was that he meant they were hot. And well, it, it all got resolved in a very confusing party. No one remembers a lot. News from the asteroid and uh, Sergio Cortez. He has found an old junkyard. This asteroid was evidently used as a junkyard by someone at some point in the distant past. All manner of discarded machinery and metallic refuse has been deposited inside the asteroid's weak gravity wheel, being slowly pulled into the jumble of debris that now covers the surface. There's nothing of particular value to be found here, but a lot of the metal could be salvaged by a mining station, and that would be extremely profitable. We should recycle what we can. The Sirius system has finally been fully surveyed. It was time to build an outpost as quickly as we could to begin the glorious production of another spaceship, a colony ship joining this Alpine world very, very soon. Oh boy, oh boy, what would you expect us now? It was also time to send the dark savant out there into space into other systems far far away it was indeed time for another choice we had to hire another scientist for our ships and this time hmm we would maybe try to expand our expertise and hire the mysterious one here. Robbie Bisaktiv. would also have to, something to find out about particles, which would be very good along the way. So she could, she could just learn some things while traveling in space. Just get where no one has gotten before. <gasps> in Evripe, another, another mysterious thing has happened. Atmospheric readings from Evripe 1A do not match simulated projections. Challenging. But we won't send Johnny Really Rotten out there to research that instantly. Because no mystery can be left uncovered. No stone can be left unturned. A new home, a new station. Sirius has been discovered and uh, we would indeed start a mining station there very quickly and then it was time to send out a colony ship. We are lacking alloys. That's what we, what we knew. How to get more alloys? Mm, that was kind of hard right now. So we would have to wait a bit, or would we? 
We had no way to get to this at the moment. So we would just have to wait just a little bit. But hopefully not much. Everything was prepared to settle on Sirius. And we would not be stopped by mere capital. Hopefully. Our culture exploration initiative welcomed the upcoming settlement on Sirius. It was time for some serious science on its surface, they said. Pony, but true. More news from the Procyon system. Mysterious. And very hard to research. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock. Oh yes, Cortez, you would learn much from that. It would take quite a big, big while, but hey, if you don't try, you don't succeed. We would send central quarters out to instantly uncover what was hidden out there in the mysterious Procyon system. It was time to go forward. And then, in the Barnard star system, we have found a cruiser. The shattered remnants of a cruiser-sized starship can be detected in a decaying orbit deep inside the atmosphere of the gas giant. Barnard Star 5. It appears to have ventured into the gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer, only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided us with some interesting engineering data, says Joel Gorn. What a remarkable vessel indeed. Looking forward to finding out more from this mysterious Barnard star system. Who could have known? A gas giant is a giant planet composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. Gas giants are sometimes known as failed stars because they contain the same basic elements as a star. Jupiter and Saturn are the gas giants of the solar system. The term gas giant was originally synonymous with the giant planet. But in the 90s, 1990s that is, it became known that Uranus and Neptune are really a distinct class of giant planet being composed mainly of heavier volatile substances, which are referred to as ices. For this reason, Uranus and Neptune are often classified in the separate category of ice giants. Just wow, in the mysterious Eunuch system, Robbie had discovered something hellishly difficult. Signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this weird and dangerous, maybe, asteroid. Mysterious. Oh, maybe too mysterious, but not too mysterious for us. We would go for it instantly. It was high time to do it indeed and it was time for something else as well buying just a little bit of alloys for an exorbitant price to send over hmm whom should we send the conformists but sedentary and wasteful or the garians Maybe it would be easier to start with the Igarians. Here we go. Just a little bit more flexibility. We send to Sirius now. To find a, found a glorious colony and prepare the grounds for the humans of the culture. Sirius raises late in the dark. Liquid sky on summer nights, star of stars, Orion's dog, they call it brightest of all, but an evil portent bringing heat and fevers to suffering humanity. From the Iliad. We had discovered more swirling shadows indeed, immense ragged plains of shadow drift across Evripa 1A's face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged or rather jointed to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science officer Johnny Really Rotten is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or maybe fungi, or what possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. An atmosphere beyond a planet 
on an unhabitable molten world. Shadow play, indeed. Molten world, or lava planet. A lava planet is a type of terrestrial planet, with the surface mostly or entirely covered by molten lava. Situations where such planets could exist include a young terrestrial planet just after its formation, a planet that has recently suffered a large collision event, or a planet orbiting very close to its star, causing intense irradiation and tidal forces. We had progressed in our first contact with the mysterious spacefarers. The inquiry into the unidentified spacecraft that was observed in the Frippe system continues, but insufficient data has been collected to make an informed hypothesis as to the exact origin of the vessel. Since we're likely dealing with a representative of a previously unknown alien civilization, efforts should be made to intercept their communications and begin a comprehensive analysis of their language. Keep at it! Quickly! The first years of our first contact outside of the Cosmic Compact were full of intense stress. Were these the first evil aliens we would meet? Would we have to build up a serious fleet? Would our allies be able to help with the defense? Would we be forced to wage an aggressive war, delaying science for an event that usually only produces losses for everyone? Another decision would have to be made in our tradition. We could maybe increase our trade value by opening the markets to our friends as well. We could have a higher Federation naval capacity, but we wouldn't we hadn't even exhausted our own. This would lead to insider trading, which would be very practical for us. On the other hand, secure shipping was also pretty good. But maybe the most important thing as of now would be expansion. We had sacrificed some of our influence in the name of the Federation and the research. And so expansion was maybe what would drive us forward most. To reach for the stars was one of the goals of the culture. The Habitable World Survey had progressed. We now knew without a doubt that a thriving biosphere would not be something unique to, to Earth or to uh, Xurgav Viba Fitov or to Alpha Centauri Prime or as they called it Giziru. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable and life-bearing worlds. Certainly a commendable initiative, even if we would admire the influence, we would suddenly be inclined to go for more research, as that lies in our nature best. Finally, we had gained an overview about the Barnard's star system. Mostly gas giants, but one habitable planet. A beautiful ocean world of relatively big size, with strange crystals on its surface, or rather in its caverns. We would instantly build an outpost to claim this planet for our great civilization. And the ship? Joel gone on board would uh, look into the dearth system. A red dwarf like Barnard's star is the smallest and coolest kind of star on the main sequence. Red dwarfs are by far the most common type of star in the galaxy, at least in the neighborhood of the Sun. But because of their low luminosity, individual red dwarfs cannot be easily observed. From Earth, not one star that fits the stricter definitions of a red dwarf is visible to the naked eye. Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to the Sun, is a red dwarf, as are 50 of the 60 nearest stars. It's a very common type of star. According to some estimates, red dwarfs make up three quarters of the stars in the galaxy. A close shave. The easy seat to look in the White Owl vessel we had sent to investigate the Gamma aliens narrowly escaped a vicious attack by their forces. It seems they had thought to seize our ship to interrogate our crew. 
probably with the aim of swinging further hostilities against us in their favor. Thankfully, the ECC Tulak in the White managed to engage emer emergency FTL before it was too late. <gasps> Very worrying. My goodness me. Breathe. Breathe. This sector is not safe anymore. Thankfully Jane Feather at least learned something from the incident that we, she would put into research. Our first or third contact had nearly developed into a disaster. The weird aliens we had watched were actively trying to kill or abduct our ships and scientists. We were on full alert, eagerly waiting for the bureaucracy to step aside to be able to prepare for war. Nothing much was known about the beings that had attacked us still. Their technology, their dark intent, their armies, their fleets, everything lay in the shadows of war. A fog of uncertainty, a cloud of doubts and fears. Still, there was an optimism to some people no one could understand. You know, there's always people that will emphasize the good things in life no matter what, and you need them for situations like this, if only to relax. Let the serious people prepare for the worst. Time for another science decision. From nanomechanics, advanced instrumentation, we went to... Well, thinking about the new encounter, we're definitely looking at improving our ship weapons a lot more intensive we need armor afterburners or maybe improve our corvettes and maybe that was the way to go improving the corvettes would make them much sturdier and much better in the end we would fly out with the best gentle people the culture had to offer. Off to space, truly. It was great fun flying the Corvettes, a limited crew. Live every day like it could be your last, because it... We had found another, this time a more routinely interesting anomaly in the Dearth system. An abandoned ship again has been left to drift aimlessly above this planet, a toxic world. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggest that it relied on solar power to function. Interesting. We would investigate, and maybe we can learn something from this strange technology. Dearth 3 had probably become toxic under the influence of a runaway greenhouse effect, blocking any heat from leaving the planet, dissolving toxic chemicals and gases into an atmosphere that would be hell for any living being. Another weird anomaly we met in the Akamath system on Akamath 3. We were surveying just the way in Akamath Sea, but turned back to Akamath as we saw a colossal impact crater that hinted that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. Johnny Really Rotten would investigate quickly. And now it was time to celebrate the first human or rather Igarian maybe colony. Our colony ship managed with surprising grace to maneuver between the massive peaks that are so prevalent in the jagged landscape of Sirius Prime. It touched down in a sheltered valley that will serve as an ideal first landing site. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary and first power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former star starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first human culture city on an alien world. A great day for the Earth Culture Cooperative and our Federation. Leaving home, the madly impressive mountains of Sirius Prime, a new home among fountains of ice in a blinding light. We could finally have a look at that strange ship of Doth 3. We've discovered an abandoned solar ship in orbit around Doth 3. The sunlight vessel was built by an unknown culture. 
and has a large tear where some kind of object passed through. Most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. An interesting, albeit primitive, design of this solar sailor above there. That strange and toxic world of... We found out more about the strange crater on Akama 3. It appears to be the result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exiting a hyperlane at maximum velocity rammed the planet for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. Maybe sent it into a catastrophic molten state. The ECC Petrobon, the contender, has picked up residual subspace, echo, subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field. But as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. Still, it's a remarkable find. Some more news from the evil aliens, the gamma aliens that try to kill our ship. Mistaken ident identification. It seems our linguists have suffered a major setback in their attempts at codifying the language used by the Gamma aliens. Unfortunately, what they had taken to be their language, quite simply, was not a language. In his report, Envoy Tyrun states that after days of investigating the matter from every angle, the linguists finally concluded that it was in fact probably an attempt at music. Oh go! Oh no! The Dearth system would never stop to disappoint. Dearth 7 had impressive structures, litter Dearth 7's surface, pack practically begging for some archaeological work. Hey, Joel Gorn, do you want some archaeological work? Yeah, that's what, what you're out here for, right? That's exactly what you're in there. Finally, we had enough alloys for a new colony ship to send to the ocean world on Barnard Star 3, but we were still missing some consumer goods to send out. But of course, we could also always buy things, right? Loaded this way, we sent the first human colony ship over to the ocean world of Barnard Star 3. Would we thrive in the waves of Barnard Star 3? We also have a first bureau of the Varelviv conglomerate, one of the members of the Cosmic Compact on Earth. They're already making good money and uh, we welcome them on the planet. Good business everyone, good business. More news from the evil Gamma Aliens. They are elusive. Our attempts to learn more about the Gamma Aliens have so far been in vain. While we were easily able to ascertain that they clearly form part of a technologically advanced and evil alien civilization, further facts have proven elusive, as they seem to be going to considerable effort to prevent us and any other eavesdroppers from intercepting any signals from them. We have therefore only managed to intercept small fragments of their language so far. However, from the glimpses we have gleaned, our linguists are confident that they will be able to decipher that their communications if we can just acquire a greater sample size. A proposal has been drawn up for somewhat more aggressive information gathering. Some may call it hacking. But they will surely not take it kindly to if they should detect it. Mm. Hacking is not what we want to be known for. At least we are also not too powerful enough to <laughs> attempt that, so it would be wise to be rather cautious for now. We have, however, a first look at them. They seem to be four-eyed apes looking mysteriously into the void. Even the kids would play evil aliens now. The four-eyed gamma apes were the evil fashion of these years. Laser toys sold better 
good times while we were in full encounter preparation in the Space Navy. More news from the mystery at Dearth 7. It's uninhabited and indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall cenotaphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, evidently placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The monolith's flowing lines deftly chart a history so fantastical it must surely be fictional. What should we do with that? Hmm. We must investigate and image them for the archives. Do you see that? They have come, and they want to investigate if River A so far unclaimed system. It might be time that... that... that we built up a military. That's the only way, I'm pretty sure, that we will stop these Gamma aliens. But how shall we start? Start with the ship designer. I will make a new corvette. Usually at the start, nuclear missiles are something very, very handy. Why? Because they have shield penetration and extra hull damage, so it's it's really handy to have that. On the other hand, the other weapon is kind of optional. At least they have good tracking. So, um, the other thing is a nuclear missile doesn't have anything like shield or armor. It has only hull points. So, should look into that and see that. It doesn't matter at all which one, so we're just going to go for a mass driver. Remove the shields quickly might be important or might not be important. It could not be less important. Mm -hmm. We're going to go for a reactor booster. This enables us to get a lot of deflectors. So hopefully our opponents will not get through the shields that we have or mass now. It will be the culture call with 1.0. And we will need a couple of them. We will really need a couple of them. We can save up a little bit of influence until we know more about our surroundings, but it would be really, really tempting to maybe get something done in Yunak, where we are having that big, big research project. So we might just claim that thing, but it lacks a little bit of influence still. So, oh well. Let's actually use our fleet manager to refit again and uh, we're going to refit them into this so we're armed again it's a little bit costly but we have a lot of time so here we go the first step rearm Finally, our researcher have learned about the quantum theory, exploring the mediation of fundamental forces through subatomic particles will help us in our research a lot. And having an administrative AI will help us even more. Even though better shields would be nice, this is just too good to pass up. A, an overall increase of research speed of 5% will help us greatly. Oh, 
quantum theory, a painful insight? That you need probability calculations and crystal clear determination suddenly seemed a little wonky. More from the incredibly mysterious Dearth system and Dearth 6, the barren world. A small rectangular object on the surface of this planet is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror, reports Joel Gorn. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. We must solve this mystery together. You wanted to look towards someone else, but in the end you only saw yourself. As if the world was only glittering hollow shells that you took from your own forgotten shelf. We have returned to Dearth 6. Sciences officer Joel Gorn and the crew of the ECC Cadman the Restorer discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet. And exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We've prepared a special project to translate the text. Well, here we are still. Ready to know more about the mysterious Earth system. Also, we've researched the whole of Akama and now there's this ship in the river system. Let's fly by very quickly and hope for the best. It was called Ape Ship Alert, cold sweat. We were just an unarmed science vessel. Maybe it was time for armed science vessels. We had told this again and again to the bureaucracy. Nothing changed. More research coming in. Finally, we have finished our biodiversity studies of alien worlds. Studying the different forms of life that appear on our world helps us better understand ourselves and the life that surrounds us on alien planets. Finally, we've went to that. And now? Where would we? Where should we go? Removing blockers is maybe too early. We don't need to do that right now. But increasing our population growth would certainly be helpful. We are enough farmers for now, but this would help us a lot. And there's also something else we can do. Finally, we can remove the sprawling slums from Earth. A great feeling to not only care for space, but for our own people as well. Way to go! They were so thankful and instantly swarmed to help out where they could. So we decided to, uh, in the future, expand the armada of corvettes for now. We would need a good admiral, but who? A logistician could be good. Not necessarily needed at the moment. Mikaba, learning quickly but dying early. Or maybe Darmul. Darmul? But as we went to know him better, he was all actually called Benjamin Moen Falstad. And he was available here to lead our armada and maybe learn a thing or two about logistics while he was waiting for more ships to arrive. News from the Rim. First contact established. Our efforts to decipher the signals picked up from the Gamma aliens have paid off and we have finally made a breakthrough. While our mastery of their language may not be complete, we have managed to successfully open diplomatic channels with the civilization we now know to be the United Kenla clans. They were hostile. But now? What? was next.
on screen United Kenla clans and actually they were not that different from us it was crazy they were also egalitarian and materialist but also militarists an assembly of clans democratic as well and their leader wrote us this I represent the United Kenla clans our elected leader clan speaker Jurk, daughter of Saka hopes for peaceful relations with your people but know that we are more than capable of defending our way of life we would really look forward to have them maybe even in our federation we could stand together against the perils cooperation will surely benefit us all we told them and now would they they called us friends now what would that change they would take f tripper because they were very close by now we understood why they defended that territory but now we also saw the option to expand our own into that direction would be a good idea it was sad to lose Akama but inevitable and they said the following well met friends let us know if there's something United can Larklands can do for you and there was indeed something we would send an envoy instantly to improve relations with them we would establish an embassy with them form a commercial pact and would go all out to also form a research agreement it was possible to get them into our federation and if it was possible it was very a very good idea to do so they were so similar and even though we had seen them as enemies because they destroyed one of our ships it was now a totally different thing there was hope to be seen and Johnny could now in peace survey the other systems around them and find out more about their civilizations and surroundings there was short communique that we received from them the Kenla were rebuilders, but also warriors, protectors and explorers. Their civilization was long ago visited by the ancient visitors, a race of aliens who wanted to help the Kenla advance and rise into the solar age of exploration and conquest. They were of an unknown origin and came from an, a, mysterious, a mysterious home planet of Kenza. We had no more knowledge than that of them but they were also fond of the tropics rapid breeders strong communal staying together and easy to get by but also sedentary and a little bit wasteful so they were not dissimilar to us we lived on the same types of worlds maybe um, made the same parties maybe could celebrate together in the future an alliance that was there to come and stay. Psychological profile Ken La clans. Democratic crusaders believe that it is their moral imperative to spread their democratic way of life. They tend to get along well with other democracies but are more than willing to use military force to liberate the populations of less democratic empires. We would form a commercial pact with the Kenla clans. This was a sound proposal. They agreed to our offer of a commercial pact. We would even get more out of this. As with establishing an embassy, they were deeply honored that they and they valued the relations between our nations highly as we did. Would there be more to come? Maybe a research federation? We didn't know. 
We had discovered, though, a new archaeological site. But where? Where, indeed? Where was it? A strange asteroid. The Beta Corvi system, out there. Discovered by the good dark savant on the Tulakin the White. Tempting. And also the research agreement went down cordially. Very well, we will share our knowledge with the Earth Culture Cooperative in exchange for your own, said the United Kenla Clans. Were there more diplomatic options opening up? Could we invite them into a federation one day? They would not do it. But why? We would have to investigate further. They were target of a casus belli for their ideology. Maybe that was the reason. Could we offer them association status? Not yet, but that might change, as well as a migration treaty. Time would heal this wound, these wounds, and then maybe something would open up. Remember the strange alien mural on Dearth 6? We finally got around to translate it. Science Officer Drelgorn has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Dearth 6. It is a memorial for an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They were apparently exterminated by the creatures of the mural, a fact that they seem to regret. Given that the mural has been dated to be in excess of 300 million years old, it is likely that its creators are also extinct by now. Perhaps most interesting of all is the material that the mural was made of. Despite its age, it is in remarkably good condition and would tell us more in the future. Joel has learned a lot from this. What was that archaeological site we came back to? A strange asteroid, seemingly unremarkable at first closer examination of VTR-981 has revealed that it's actually an artificial construct designed to mimic a natural asteroid. We would have to send equipment there, but we could only do that if we had a station in Petakovi, so it had to wait for now. Two thousand two hundred and six. Finally, we have established a new colony on Sirius Prime. We are looking forward to prosperity in this alpine world, and maybe it could lead to better research for us. There were noxious swamps that were a little bit dangerous, but nothing important would block our access to the beautiful mountains of Sirius Prime. There were, of course, jobs open now, and so we wouldn't do much for the start. But we were looking forward to growth on this planet. And uh, certainly we would welcome some more research, as research was the foundation of our Federation. The first crisis has been averted by pure luck. Four-eyed evil monkeys, eh? <laughs> We were so glad we could continue our friendship with space and the great people in it. But would it stay that way? Would we be able to bond with our new friends as well? Or would we become rivals? Where would science and the Federation lead us? This is Immanuel Khan signing out. Happy gaming and until next time in the origins of the culture.